What is up guys, today I want to show you my top seamless cinematic transitions and the best of it, you don't need any fancy plugins for it or After Effects, we can do it completely in Premiere Pro or any other editing software. I also just released a brand new cinematic LUT pack on my website, currently it's 50% off, so if you want check it out, the link is in the description. Also make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video. And before we start I want to address one more thing that you need to keep in mind, it doesn't matter what camera or gear you have. Almost all my shots are shot with the Sony A6000 and it's a five-year-old camera. It's fairly cheap but it has everything I need. It always depends in your creativity and the techniques you use. All the transitions you learn in this video you can basically shoot on an iPhone or any other smartphone. So stay focused on learning new things instead of worrying about if your camera or gear is good enough because it is good enough, trust me. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the first transition. Starting up with the first transition, which is speed ramping. So what we basically do is we change the clip speed of those two clips I selected, but we don't want to change the whole speed of the clip, we just want to change parts of it for the transition, the end of the first clip and the beginning of the second clip. Therefore, we are going to zoom in a little bit. I nest them before, so right click and nest. And now we go to the top left corner of the clip, right click on the FX toggle, time remapping, speed. And now you can see this line in the middle of the clip. That's our clip speed. So as you can see, when I pull it up, it's getting shorter. That means that the video is going faster. But we don't want to change the whole clip speed. We just want to change parts, as I said. So what we're going to do is we select the part we want to speed up go to the effect controls window effect controls if it's not already there and then we have this time remap toggle and we need to select the part we want to speed up and when i click on the keyframe it appears in the clip and now what i'm gonna do is i pull up the right part of it so the end of the clip but the problem is now we have a really hard change of speed and we want to have a smooth transition so we need to smooth it out and therefore we click on the keyframe and drag it to the right. As you can see, now there is like this ramp. And to make this even more smooth, we need to bend this blue line to make it linear to the speed ramp. And now we do the same for the other clip as well. Select the point where we want to end the speed ramp. Time remapping speed. keyframe it and scale it up. I scaled both clips to about 750-ish percent. It always depends on the general clip speed so you have to play with it till you're satisfied. Now when we play back we have a seamless speed ramp transition. Continue with the second transition, which is masking. I selected two clips, one in the subway train and one on a cable car. And what we want to do is we want to mask out this pillar from the subway train shot and reveal the cable car shot. So first we're gonna nest the clip we want to mask. And then we go to the position where the mask should start and we want to start it after this pillar. And what we're gonna do is we go to the effect controls, it's in window effect controls and click on this little brush icon there. And then you will see mask one. So that's our mask. We toggle on all of the time watches there. Select the mask and have a look at the preview window. Make sure you see the full preview window. Sometimes it's scaled to 100% and it makes it difficult to mask. So I usually do it to 25%. And then we draw our mask. As you can see, the left side is black now, but we want to mask out the other side. So what we're gonna do is we go back to the effect controls and click on invert it. 
You can change the feather of the mask or the expansion. I usually keep it at like 10 and 5 in this case, but you can play around. And now we go keyframe by keyframe and adjust the mask. Another keyframe, adjust it just one step forward until the whole window is only the mask. All right, and when we are done, and that's a really important part, we need to go back to our first keyframe and go one keyframe forward and drag the mask out of the window. Otherwise you will have this black bar in your video and we don't wanna have that. You can deselect the mask and let it play to see if everything is fine. And now the only thing we have to do to put the second clip underneath the first clip and you have to make sure that you put it exactly there where the mask begins. And when we play it back, we have a really nice masking transition. Coming over to the third transition, which is frame blocking. And it's pretty much the same principle as the masking transition, but we don't mask here. What we want to do, we want to have a seamless transition between the ceiling of the first shot and the railing of the second one. And we go to the part where the railing is complete in frame. And when we put it next to each other and play it back, as you can see, it's pretty good that way, but um, we want to make it a little bit more seamless. So what we do is we put the second clip underneath the first one, same as with the masking. After that is done, we go to the effect controls. It's in window effect controls and change the opacity for the last part of the video. As you can see on the first keyframe, I choose 100% opacity. On the second one also 100% and then I go all the way back to the last keyframe of the video and change that to 0% so it fades out in a way. And now what we do, we put the second clip to the first keyframe of the first clip and as you can see when you play it back it's a perfect seamless transition. The next transition is the whip transition and that is basically an in-camera transition. So you have to pre-plan your shot and make the transition in your camera when you're out there filming. And the most important part of this transition is that both clips are going into the same direction. So as you can see in my clips, they're going from top to down. And what we want to do is we select the part where the motion blur and the speed is the most. So in that case, around here. And in the second clip, I choose around here, like where I'm almost in the frame. And then I put them next to each other. And now we have the perfect whip transition. The speed and direction transition is a really easy one with almost no editing involved. The most important part is that both clips are going to the same direction as well as roughly with the same speed. As you can see in my clips there is this skateboarder in the first clip going to the right and the second clip the car what is also going to the right and what we're going to do is we use this policeman as our transition of the first clip. So we wait till the policeman is in frame, trim it. Then we go to the second clip and go to the pickup truck until it's full in frame to use it as our second transition start. And we put it next to each other and we have our seamless speed and direction transition.
continue with the match cut transition and you basically need two clips who are identical. As you can see, I chose two clips of my friend Bram walking next to a river. And what we want to do is we want to sync them and therefore we go to the effect controls and scale both clips up to about 105%. That's important for adjust the position later. And now we put the second clip underneath the first clip. Mark the clip above and bring down the opacity in the effect controls to about 20%. And now you're able to see in the preview window both clips and what we want to do is we want to sync them now. So you have to play around to find a sweet spot. In my case, it is about here, I would say. That looks good. And now what I do is I trim the first clip, bring back the opacity 200% and have a look and it's not looking too bad, but I think there's a little bit more room for improvement. So what we do now is we adjust the position. That's why we scaled up the clip in the first place. Now we bring back the opacity to 100%, play it back, and I think that looks really, really good. color and shape transition. For that transition we use colors and shapes to create a seamless transition and in this case we want to use the flashing lights of the elevator and the flashing lights of the light flares to create a seamless transition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to the point in the first shot where the lights appearing the most, trim it, go to the second clip go to the point in the video where the light flares are almost covering the whole frame, trim it, bring it back together and when you play it back you have a seamless transition. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to subscribe and like the video, let me know what you want to see next and if you have any questions, see you soon.